All right, hello and welcome back to the Steins Gate visual novel. Um, I believe this is uh, part 17 now. <laughs> Quite a lot. Uh, there is a lot of meat and potatoes to this Steins Gate visual novel, and I'm uh, really appreciating that. And I also appreciate they don't have some silly limiting policy for vlogging it. So, very much big thank you to the Steins Gate team and, you know, whoever has the decision making over something like that. So, anyhow, we're continuing on with all this sciencey terminology stuff. Alright, so, first we send the wormhole in LA all the way to the end of the universe at near the speed of light, and once it's there, we yank it back to LA. Huh. Uh, how? It's going to take a while to get back into character. The same epic voice for all of them. According to the special theory of relativity, time slows down for objects moving at the speed of light, meaning the hole that returned to LA would be further in the past than the Akihabara hole. That's just mind-boggling. I, I can't even wrap my head around it. Ay ay ay. So you work a day. So no joe tie the hole in Sanga Wamo hole in Toby Kondara. Soon in my mind, I'll be here. So now, if Ho and San jumped into the wormhole, he'd arrive in LA several years before he left. My gosh. Really mind boggling. Absolutely mind boggling. This is walking us through all of it. There needs to be a book about every one of these terminology. Holy heck, this is some technical stuff over my head. However, this still can't be called true time travel. It only seems that way. This is called the Urashima effect. Right, let's check that. Urashima effect. In special relativity, a phenomenon originating from the fact that time slows down as an object approaches the speed of light. For example, people. For, for, for example, imagine that an astronaut travels to a nearby star and back at close to the speed of light. This trip might take a few years from the astronaut's perspective, but he would return to Earth to find that thousands of years had passed in his absence. My gosh. Absolutely mind-boggling. The important part is to return to Akihabara from LA through the wormhole once more, since the transit time is zero. Since the travel time is zero, Hoen san will return to Akihabara several years in the past. Time travel complete. Absolutely mind boggling. How about you? The prerequisites for wormhole travel are simpler than the ones for cosmic string travel. First, the wormhole itself, they may exist somewhere in the universe, but nobody has ever seen one. Second, the energy required to move a wormhole to the end of the universe and back at near light speed. Third, exotic matter, which, by the way, has not been confirmed to exist. Let me check it just in case I missed one. Nope. Okay. So, in implementation of either one would require a ridiculous amount of effort. 
Yeah, it sounds out of the realm of possibility. Now, do you see what I meant when I said that time travel is an absurd concept, Kurisu says? Seems out of man's reach. Time travel theories are all just thought experiments. Not one of them can create a viable time machine. That is my answer, Kurisu says. Alright, so a student says, isn't there anything simpler? Like something you can pull out of a drawer and just use or something? Uh, no. Risa says, I'm afraid not. A firm declaration. She continues, this is the limit of modern physics. I can't say how it might change in 10 years, though. Besides, even if someone did overcome the logistical requirements, there may be other factors that prevent time travel from working. Kurisu says, Ah, oh, jeez, I'm out of water. And that's because fundamental problems concerning the principle of causality have not yet been solved. The principle of causality, a scientific and philosophical, philosophical principle that states that every event has a cause, and it is by that cause that an effect is produced. The theory of relativity is founded upon this principle. However, quantum physicists have observed microscale phenomena that do not appear to obey the principle of causality. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Here we go again. So, Okabe says... You mean time paradoxes and conservation of mass? Well, he asks. The mass of the entire universe is constant. If a time machine traveled from the future to the past, there would suddenly be the extra mass of the time machine and its pilot in the past. I remember reading in a book, not a terribly reputable book, but still, such a violation of mass conservation would put the universe in danger. It didn't say what kind of danger, though. If you think that conservation of mass applies to macro systems like the universe or micro systems like atoms or elementary particles, you're mistaken. What? Is that true? The prior, prior bit, Kreisu said. Just before that bit. Kreisu goes, heh. Ah, she's laughing at my reaction. That little. Gah, how mortifying. Kurisu says conservation of mass only applies to chemical reactions. It doesn't hold in modern physics at all. Something can come from nothing. Um, I disagree. I very much disagree. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Professor, professor says, then what is the problem? Ah, uh, Prisu says, or answers, the time paradox of time paradoxes. 
In other words, the grandfather paradox. Oh, that thing where you kill your own ancestors before you were born. Zetaini. So Karisu says, as long as this paradox goes unsolved, time travel can never be realized. Never. Student interrupts. What if you just don't kill them? Karisu says, you can't think of it like a sci-fi movie. It's not just about your family tree. There are far greater dangers than that. So, the butterfly effect. Really? It doesn't seem that dangerous. Carissa says any paradox, no matter how small, would cause the total collapse of causality, relativity, and every other physical law in existence. Paradoxes are nothing more than thought experiments. They cannot occur in reality and they should not. Teresa says. She continues. Nothing that e nothing that has even a zero point zero 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 one percent chance of causing a paradox can happen. The universe won't allow it. Wouldn't you say this is the logical conclusion? There may be loopholes like parallel worlds or the self-consistency principle, but those seem too much like fantasy for me to accept, Karisu says. Yeah, like the parallel world theory or idea, to me, I equate that to like, like the mind of God, like how, how many routes that he could see in terms of like the butterfly effect. So that's what I kind of equate it to. That's how I ponder it. Rintero, gah. I grind my teeth. Ooh, not good, dude. Careful. Don't want to do that. Oh, thank goodness we're moving on. When I see Makise Kurisu looking at me with her composed expression, I avert my eyes. Looks like I have no choice but to concede. Makise Kurisu truly is a genius. Oh, thank goodness, yes. I ended up listening to all of Kurisu's lecture at ATF. After the two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was impressive. It was an impressive lecture. So impressive that you wouldn't think it was an 18-year-old's first time. She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? Leaving that aside, I saw Makise Krisu dead. And yet she is alive. My memories don't mesh with reality. And not just about Kurisu. My conversations with Daru and Mayuri didn't make sense either. Everything would be solved if I just told myself that what I saw was a dream, an illusion. It never happened. But never say never. This leaves me with no choice. Ah, here we go. Okay. 
After parting ways with Daru at ATF, I head to Yanabayashi Shrine. And that, my friends, I think is a great place where we have to leave off. Because we're out of time anyway. So, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more of the Steinsgate visual novel. And, as always, I will see you up ahead. Something interesting next time, so take her cool.